Hello all and welcome. So I've been doing a little programming on the synth today and I've coded the envelopes. I mean there's some code that could be refactored into a separate library. For example the point to destruct and the uh, yeah the calculate point method in the envelope segment. And they will get refactored at some point but for now that's just how it is and it works. Now to follow up on what I said before in the previous video I said that the envelopes needed to be just ADSRs or you know, DADSRs, and not multi-segment envelopes, but in actual fact, I meant that from a purely user interface perspective, because even an ADSR envelope is a multi-segment envelope. So you have the attack segment, then the decay segment, the sustain segment, and the release segment. It's just that the way I see it is a multi-segment envelope is one that you can customize entirely for more advanced modulation purposes and things. But from just a user interface perspective, we want to have simple envelopes we can just manipulate, you know, for just general usage. No need to have things overly complicated if the user doesn't need anything overly complicated. And I just wanted to clear that up because what I've essentially implemented here is a multi-segment envelope system. Or it's at least a version of it because, for example, these bulls that I've got in the envelope segment class could be all rolled into one byte. You know, things like that, just little things to optimise it if required. You know, because if we wanted to get them values, we could get them together in just one byte, rather than doing multiple calls to is complete and is holding, for example. Because conceptually, a boolean is only one bit. True or false, zero or one. But the smallest piece of data that we'll work with is a byte. So a boolean essentially wastes seven bits. But what we could do is package eight booleans into one byte. And then if we get that byte, then we're actually getting eight values and wasting no bits. And of course, this can become useful in certain cases. Like for if lots of different booleans were saturating the cache lines, for example. Things like that. Low hanging fruit. But this is bleeding edge code, basically. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. But yeah, envelope segments consist of two points, A and B. And then we have T, which represents a position along the line. So it'll start at zero, and we add the speed to that. And instead of speed, I'll probably rename that to step size, because I think that'd be a more accurate term, to be honest. And then the envelope controls in the graphical user interface, well, we'd be looking at it in terms of time, I guess, but then we'd just use that to set the step size accordingly to move along the line. Anyway, moving along the line and everything is done in the next method. And then using the get method, we can get the y value at the position of t along the line. And then that is its amplitude, which we then use to multiply the oscillator signal by. And then when t goes above b's x position, then as long as this segment is not holding, then the segment is considered complete and the completed boolean becomes true. But if it is holding, then it'll hang at point B's amplitude until the unhold method is called. And then, at the top level, we have the envelope class. So again, we have a boolean for whether it's completed and a boolean for whether it's looping. Then we have a unsigned integer which stores the current segment's index. And this is just for keeping track of which segment in the vector of envelope segments that we are currently within. And of course, most of the work happens within the segments. But from the outside, there is a method, add segment, which does as it says, really. You can add a segment to the envelope. And then the get, next, and unhold methods all relate to a segment, the current segment that is in operation. So, for example, by calling the envelopes unhold method, we can tell the current segment to stop holding. But if it isn't holding, then it'll just have no effect. The get method, like the next method, just calls the current segments get and next methods, respectively. And then the reset method just sets the completer boolean to false, as well as setting current segment IDX back to zero, and calls the reset method for all the segments as well. And this is where the should hold boolean of the envelope segment comes into effect because that stores the initial value of whether it should hold. So when it gets reset, the holding boolean becomes the value of should hold. And then basically another note can be played. One thing that I will say is that there is no 
exponential curves or anything like that. It's just straight linear lines. But that's all coming later, baby. That's for sure. Don't you worry about that. So for testing, what I've basically done is I've added two segments to the envelope. We have the attack segment and then it holds at the end of that. A bit like a sustain segment, but not a true segment. And then when you release a key, we have a release segment. Now, I were going to put the other segments in, but just for testing, I didn't want any decay segment or anything like that. So I'll show that at another time because, well, there's some things that I still need to do. Like, I really need to keep track of what keys have been pressed and then assign oscillators to them. But at the moment, it's just monophonic. One voice like before, just with working envelopes. And also, I've changed the wave type to a saw wave. So it might sound a little bit abrasive because obviously there's no filter section or anything yet. So here we go, I've put this keyboard on so you can see which keys I'm pressing. So you can see the envelopes opening and closing. We also have this fine tune control. So yeah, I mean that might, the range on that might change, but you could tell that when I had that key held down, the envelope stayed open. Another thing, the fine tune control would come more into its own when you have like two oscillators being triggered together and you might want to detune them from each other by some amount because then there'll be an overall master tuning knob as well for all of the oscillators. But there is something that hasn't been accounted for and I'll just explain that. So if I hold a key, it's working fine. But of course, because there's only one oscillator, then when you press another key, it will steal the oscillator, and then the key you're holding down has no effect. Like that. So that's the next job, because you can't really do any legato or anything like that. But we can change these other controls and everything while the note's in play. Yowza. And of course we can transpose. So for example, if I play the C major scale, Then we can transpose it to, say, C-sharp. Then play the C major scale again. Then we have C-sharp major. So yeah, that was just another little development update. I was actually asked in the previous video's comment section if I would start some tutorials, but I just don't think I really have time for it at the minute. But it's definitely something I'll consider. In fact, when I've completed this synth and organized everything, because you can rest assured that things are definitely going to change. But when I've got all the code at a level of maturity that I'm happy with, I might then start a tutorial series. So let me know in the comments section if that's something that you would like, and uh, I'll try and make it happen at some point. Can't make any promises though. Anyway, that's it for now. So if you like this content, feel free to comment, like, share and subscribe. You know the deal. It's a bit different, this content, to my usual music stuff. And there'll be more music stuff coming, so stay tuned. But I just wanted to try something different with these videos, so yeah. There'll be more of these dev videos coming as well, as and when I have something to show. But I don't always have time to work on this at the moment. Not around the clock or anything. Anyway, that's a wrap for now. Thank you for watching.